Although I'm hopeful about the individual, I'm very fearful about the direction that politically this country is going. Hi, I'm Tracy Oppenheimer for Reason TV. I'm here with Jonathan Honig, Portfolio Manager of Capitalist Pig Hedge Fund. He's also a frequent guest on Fox News and Fox Business on shows like Cavuto and Bulls and Bears. Jonathan, thanks for having us. My pleasure. If you could just explain what a hedge fund is in a simple, simple language. A hedge fund is simply a pool of money. Uh, investors pool their money and appoint a manager to make those decisions. Hedge funds can invest in essentially almost anything from plain old stocks and bonds to uh, pipeline, pipeline partnerships or commodities, foreign exchange. Uh, that's primarily where I deal in, in the foreign exchange market. Uh, but they get a bad rap because they are profit seeking. I mean, we have the sense now that, well, if, if a hedge fund is profiting, someone else be, must be losing that money. Um, in fact, it's, it's very much just the opposite. You recently ran the first hedge fund ad in Crane's business in over 80 years. It was made technically illegal during the Great Depression. Uh, how did you go about doing this and uh, what are you hoping to accomplish with it? Well, it's technically still illegal. I mean, hedge funds are not allowed to advertise. That's been regulations that have been in place since the, the early 1930s. And there's some movement to change those. I said, no, I want to be first. In fact, I want to run an ad that celebrates um, individualism, celebrates freedom, celebrates free markets. So, of course, I had to choose a quote by Ayn Rand. Um, but it, it was my way of saying, look, you, uh, investors are, are profit-seeking, yes, but they're also completely moral. They're beneficial. They're, they're, they're a benefit to this country. The quote for the ad that used by Ayn Rand, it said, um, we've got to make the most of life now because we probably don't have an afterlife or something to that effect. Yeah. I know you're a big proponent of Rand. Why do you think she's still relevant in America today? Ayn Rand's influence in relevance is growing, and objective, objectivism's influence in, in relevance is, is growing. Uh, and you see it all across the, the political uh, and cultural landscape. I think especially as people are, are waking up to the importance of ideas and the reality that ideas matter. In fact, that's what that guides a country. And uh, you can look at the, the prosperity, the relative prosperity of a country like America and the total hellhole of a country like North Korea or Cuba and say, well, you know, is the water so fundamentally different in Pyongyang, North Korea, as it is in, in Chicago? No, it's the ideas that govern a country, that govern a civilization, that govern a culture. That's what determines its, its success. Do you think we're moving closer to or further away from Rand's ideals? I'm hopeful for the future. I'm truly hopeful for the future. When I see what, what man can do when he's left uh, free to achieve, to accomplish, to think, uh, how can you not be uh, hopeful? That's why when I, you know, when I look at these buildings, when I, when I use my iPhone, when I you know, explore all that's going on that's exciting in this world, I am tremendously hopeful. But I'm also fearful at the same time because I see so many out there uh, whose purpose is to destroy, uh, is only to destroy. I think there's a, a very fearful nihilism now that's growing in America. Maybe it's replacing a religion after so many years, but it's simply uh, destruction for destruction's sake. And you see it in this collectivist ideology, I think, that it's present in everything from the welfare state to regulation to more redistribution of wealth. I mean, those are the big topics that seem to be talked about uh, in political circles, and that really worries me. So, you know, although I'm hopeful about the individual, I'm very fearful about the direction that politically this country is going. As a financial expert, well, what do you think which is the most important thing that um, Americans should be pursuing right now in terms of economic recovery. For four years now, Washington has like thrown literally every idea at the wall of how to create economic growth, how to, you know, stimulus after stimulus, and let's subsidize this and try this and try that. Of course, it's all failed miserably. We're, you know, $15 trillion in debt, unemployment. I mean, you've heard all the statistics. The one thing they haven't tried is freedom, right? That's the one thing that's never on the table. Deregulation, lowering and flattening uh, uh, the tax code, opening up new markets, opening up trade, that's never on the table. And of course, that's the one remedy that the economy really needs. And so in, in that regard, does it, does it matter who's gonna win the election between Obama and Romney? I think it matters very much. I'm not a Romney supporter, but I feel like to some extent, we're in a sinking ship. The sinking ship, I think, is the president's collectivist, self-sacrificial philosophy. 
Uh, it, it frankly scares me. And although Mitt Romney is by no means the perfect candidate, I think that he could hopefully buy us some time uh, to educate the culture about the wrong direction in which we're going. Jonathan, thank you again for having us. My pleasure. For Reason TV, I'm Tracy Oppenheimer.